Welcome back to Closet Cosplay, the podcast where we create con-worthy cosplays on a, po- a podcast closet budget. <laughs> you want to keep going? I don't know. <laughs> Welcome back to Closet Cosplay, the podcast where we help you create con-worthy cosplays on a closet budget. I'm LJ. And I'm Michelle. And today we want to talk about something a little bit different than what we have been doing. So we're not actually introducing a specific cosplay to you today. Instead, we are talking about OCs. And what an OC is or stands for, um, I just recently found out about because (laughs) I actually cosplayed a character that, you know, did not exist before. And everybody kept asking me, oh, who are you? What are you? And I didn't know what to say. And one of my friends poked me and she's like, you're an OC. (laughs) And, uh, I looked at her afterwards and I was like, "What's in? What is? What is that?" Oh, see, I didn't actually know that you you weren't aware of that. No, term. I actually wasn't. And so this is kind of an interesting new thing to me, but I understand the concept. So to introduce this, an OC, from what I understand, means an original concept mm-hmm. or an original character, and it was described to me as original character. I only heard original concept five seconds ago when LJ mentioned it. Yeah, because sometimes it's not necessarily a fully fleshed out character, kind of like you had, but it's, you have a concept. And more colloquially, and you'll hear it as original character more than anything, but it is something that is occurring more and more at cons. People are doing it for various reasons, which we will go into as we discuss it. So... The main thing we wanted to talk about today was not really the cosplay aspect of it so much. We we want to talk about that next episode, but we wanted to talk about kind of the background of original characters, kind of where do these original characters or original concepts come from? How do you find one? How do we find our own? How do we create them? What's our creative process? I know a lot of people are... I'm very interested in as well, how people come up with original yeah. characters and what we kind of nailed this down to and how an original character gets started is that you could start an original character through multiple different avenues or mediums. Yeah, people do things for various reasons. The Some of the most common that you're seeing right now are original characters that either exist in an existing fandom, which is more like a fan character, or a completely original character that is for something like D&D. Otherwise known as Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons. Or LARP. Which is live action role play. <laughs> so there's several different things that you'll see. Um, and even in video games. There's- right. There are... There are video games that I, I can't think of any off the top of my head. Uh, there's several that I can't I couldn't tell you exactly which fighting game it is, but in, there is a and even in some of the wrestling games, you can come up with your own fighters and you can design them. I think it's Soul Calibur let, that lets you do the fighting characters that you can create totally original characters for and uh, do aren't, all their outfits and things. Aren't there fantasy RPGs out there as well that your adventurer you create yourself. Yeah, there's there's games. character customization in pretty much all of the major games. These exactly. Days. Oh, and people, you know, on stuff like Final Fantasy online, they'll go to cons and they'll be role playing their character or cosplaying their character that they created for Final Fantasy. And there you go. So, that's kind of a fandom character, but it's that it's, is theirs. It's original. Right. They it's made a, it. It's a video game character that was created that was then turned into a cosplay. Mm-hmm. So, that's one example. LARPing, live action role plays, is another example. Outside of Dungeons and Dragons, there are so many other tabletop RPGs yeah. out there that people create characters for just out of the blue. And I don't want to say out of the blue because people have their different methods. Yes. And yeah. their different starting points and their different development arcs and things like that. So I kind of wanted to go into. How do you create OC for different in different ways? Because it's not always the same approach depending on what you're doing it for. Exactly. So LJ has a lot more experience with LARPs than I do. I have LARPed <laughs> before. I very much enjoy it. But LJ has done it a lot more often. So I wanted her to kind of share a little bit about how she comes up with her LARP characters, how she chooses to costume yeah. them. So... One of the things that I really love about LARP is the opportunity to do not only the acting, 
but it's the costuming, which of course, if you're listening to a cosplay podcast, you'll understand why that's so interesting to me. But you have a chance to really bring something out that nobody else has seen. So for me, because it is not something that I am taking from a reference, one of my favorite things to do is pick a theme for that character. Um, I'll just briefly mention two of the ones that I think are really good examples of themes that I had. I had a, uh, she was basically from a, (laughs) Victorian era Irish mob druid family. <laughs> How specific. Yeah, very, very specific. Very, very interesting. By the way, Armistice Arcane, totally awesome LARP. If you have a chance to go, go to it. But anyway. No, wait, wait, wait. What's a druid? A druid. I would hope people would know what a druid is. I if would hope listening so too, to this, but, but just in case. So in this specific context, druid uh druidism is looked at more of like nature magic. So your geomancies or your uh, transubstantiation kind of thing. It's, uh, you're dealing more with nature magics, you're dealing more with animals, you're dealing, and it's not, a lot of people have this idea, and I'll come on a small tangent about druids, is a lot of people have this idea that druids are very hippy dippy, like peace, love. No, they are they have the harvest and they have the, you know, the planting. They have the life and they have the hunt and they have the culling. They, you know, there's, there's, and that's actually one of the interesting things about the druids in this specific instance is um, they would use blood for magic, but it wasn't their own. It wasn't like blood magic, but it mm-hmm. was animal. It was, you know, that kind of like nature and primitive and primal thing. And uh, so we actually would walk around with like blood on our faces, which was a huge, big no-no, like, and people were going crazy about it. But anyway, I digress. Right. (laughs) So anyway, the theme that I picked for my character was, so she was this druid and she grew up in this thing and they're all very greens and browns and earth tones and stuff like that. But my character was sort of a wayward child. She was drawn to the idea of the city. She kind of wanted to break away from these expectations and this life that she's got. And she was very young and she was very hopeful and naive and, you know, life is spring. And so for me, I was like, that's the direction I'm going to take her. So all of her stuff that I, I costumed her with was around these central themes of spring colors, which I picked like pinks, pink colors and flowers. Everything that I had had flower motifs on it from my handkerchiefs to my dress to the ball gown. I had flowers sewed onto it. So for me, that was my theme, spring and flowers. And so you kind of have to figure out what is the aspect of that personality that you want to bring out that is symbolic of who they are and will read to them. Because when you look at somebody or like my character who you, she immediately reads as young, she immediately reads as flighty and stuff like that. Where on the flip side, I have a character, I had a character for LARP, uh, for vampire LARP, which is totally different. <laughs> uh, Shrike, loved her to death. Uh, Michelle knows all about Shrike. Yes. <laughs> but my theme for her um, was asymmetry. Because she was a very hypocritical character in a lot of ways that didn't really come across. But uh, so I picked black and white and asymmetry. So everything that she wore was uh, like her haircut was long on one side and short on the other side. Uh, she would have epaulets on one side and not on the other. She would have, you know, a stark black side and a stark white side depending on what I was doing and I wanted her to come across as sort of imbalanced and unpredictable in a predictable sort of way if that makes sense like you want your character to read consistently because there is no frame of reference and you want something to feel cohesive and I feel like I always manage to do that with mine. And because you don't have a silhouette, you should have uh, specific pieces that sort of get across what your character is like without having to tell people, which is kind of what you had that experience with with uh, your elf warrior. Well, yeah, I have this um, character that I was talking about when people came up to me and they're like, who are you? So the character I was playing was... I don't even have a name for this character, honestly. It's just I wanted to be an elf in a nice, pretty dress with a a militaristic jacket with Mm -hmm. epaulets. And I wanted to wear a crown because I was like, I've never had that opportunity to have a tiara on my head for a full day. And (laughs) I'm going to do it. 
And so I walked around and I was basically, oh, and I had purple hair because I was like, I want, yeah. I've always wanted a purple wig. So I said, yeah, of course she's going to have purple hair. We're going to do that because it's an original character and I can do what I want. Yes. <laughs> so it's fine. Freedom is great. And so what happened is when I was walking around as this character, I, I hadn't really, you know, done all of this themed character, <laughs> you know, figuring out exactly who this character was or anything like LJ's talking about. I was more just, I want to look this way. And that was basically it. So I took this character to con and I walked the floor and what I noticed were people were bowing to me and calling me your highness, basically all day everywhere I went like every time I got onto an elevator people were like oh your highness you look so lovely today or things mm-hmm. like this or they'd like give a little bow and oh, it God. kind of felt very Ren Fairy to me in that sense I was like and I love Ren Fairs because everybody around walks around and says oh my lady how are yeah, you, you know, I, I love that I love that stuff I eat it up so I thought to myself I was like okay yeah she's a queen so that's that's gonna be a thing mm-hmm. she's gonna be like a your majesty and then I, and, and so I kind of got like the feelings I got from Khan or what I'm going to use to further develop this character and go forward. So I thought, I was like, oh, she's going to be leading an army. So I wanted a rapier. Like I'm going to buy a rapier and wear it on like my side and be kind of more like that queen that leads her people into yeah, battle and like general. a really strong, like str- solid and strong type character, like with a leading personality and I I thought very poised and proper and put together and so I've kind of done the character development on the end like after I got the look together which is totally a thing that you can do people will fill in the blanks we are naturally wanting to find patterns and fit into an idea so people will be like who are you and you may you can say original character and that can help you develop a bit of yourself to go on to a next cosplay or a next convention with this cosplay and you've now rounded it out and now you kind of have this idea and don't feel like because it's just in your head or it's just on a piece of paper that it doesn't exist with any of the same sort of validity as any other quote real character exactly because uh, you can have so much you can have just as much fun with an original character at a con as you could with this super recognizable character Mm -hmm. and even outside of super recognizable characters i wanted to kind of touch on if you're playing a more obscure character or a less known character and somebody comes up to you and says, oh my gosh, are you this person? And maybe that's not the character you're cosplaying. <laughs> you should totally just be like, yes, yeah. I am this character. How did you know? You know, react positively because to them, they saw something in your character design, whatever you're doing, that very much impressed upon them, you know, something positive, some positive feeling about a character they love. Right. And... I've heard some cosplayers say like, oh, well, they didn't get what I was going for and it hurts their feelings. But to me, I'm excited that people come up to me and compliment me on whatever yeah, they absolutely. think I've done. And if you apparently look close enough to what they think, there's nothing to say that you technically aren't some sort of cosplay or artist rendition of whoever they're thinking of. Right. And maybe you, you know, if you are comfortable enough to... to ask them and you don't know who the character is they asked who you are you say well who is that or what is that from and then you look at it and you say oh this cosplay is super close to that maybe i'll use these items for that cosplay and you've got a new cosplay yeah you never knew it existed and you already had it exactly it's a really good opportunity to get some feedback and give you ideas for your own or move on to a different one it's it's good and i definitely encourage people to do more ocs i i cannot wait to see more ocs at conventions from here on out absolutely and um i wanted to kind of go in the direction that i have developed some original characters of my my own so the idea for this queen elf Mm -hmm. originally came from an image on pinterest that i believe was a dress worn in the crown tv show okay and i loved it (sighs) it was like this militaristic top Mm -hmm. it almost i don't think it was a jacket but it looked very militaristic it had like an epaulette and like the um you know those things that come across yeah they're almost like a little band right looking it almost looks like band like yeah and it was this long flowing skirt and i said (gasps) 
I love that. It's beautiful. I want to wear that. And she had like the just gentle tiara on her. And she just looked strong and powerful. And I thought, oh man, I'm just toss my elf ears on that and any kind of hair I want. And I, I just want to do that. Yeah. So that's where that original character came from. So it wasn't even like super well thought out. It was just, I want to wear that. Yeah. Which is totally valid. It is. And then... I have I've played a lot of tabletop RPGs and Dungeons and Dragons and things like that and coming up with those original characters for me is a different process Mm -hmm. and I've also played in LARP and that's a different process Mm -hmm. so for a Dungeons and Dragons campaign that I get to create my own character that there's not pre-gens for which are pre-generated characters so it's a character already made for you but when you are responsible for making your own character and bringing that to the table Usually, my process looks like two different ways. I I will usually go at it two different ways. Either I will start on Pinterest or on Google Images or something like that and just start browsing character images. Yeah. And if I see a character that I am intrigued by or that I like, like their look Mm -hmm. or the feel of the emotion on their face or it's just something that calls out to me about that picture that I say, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. Or it's an interesting weapon. Or it could be an interesting, like, family dynamic, you see. Or or just any kind of thing. Or just a personality comes through in a picture. And I will grab onto that and say, okay, I want to... Or it might be as simple as seeing a curly-haired character and saying, (laughs) oh, yeah, I'm going to build something around having, like, a big head of curly hair because... I just love that idea. Yeah. I don't have curly hair myself. I wish I did. I want to play a curly haired character. <laughs> it's whatever it is. Yeah. And, and you can be whoever. That's the fun of creating an original character. You, you can just do whatever you want to do. So it's so freeing to be able to say, okay, I've always wanted to do this thing. Or I've always wanted to have this trait. Or I've always wanted to look this way. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what I want to play. And conventions are a great place to show that off. It's one of the only opportunities you get to. And it's so affirming and complimentary when people come up like they came up to you and they're like oh we want to take a picture of you like I put something together that people like and it's not something that was created for me to replicate I made this yeah I did this myself and people appreciate it and it's exciting so that's one method I use to create my Dungeons and Dragons or tabletop RPG characters is I'll just pull kind of whatever it is from an image Mm -hmm. and the second way is I'll think of a I don't, I don't know if trope is the correct word, but... A gimmick, maybe? Yeah, like kind of a gimmick. Or, no, or plenty just of people a, who do gimmick. Or a role or something. Mm-hmm. So so I'll give the example my most recent Dungeons & Dragons character. I really wanted to explore a mother with who has always been a stay-at-home mom type character, who has always been all about her family, just a very family-focused character, And who had, like, her kids were going off to college and she now has this second chance to go and explore the world and and finish what she started or start something new. And I said, I want to explore who that character becomes. I want to see, you know, does she prove to her kids that she can do anything? Does she (laughs) fall flat on her face? Does, is she able to get back into society and, and be nuanced instead of always talking to people like their children? And just explore those things. Because it's like, I don't know anything about that. I'm not a mother. I don't have kids. But I found the idea of it very interesting. Yeah, I know. That's an intriguing concept. Yes. And so that's what she was built off of, was just that idea of, I want to explore what this looks like. Right. And then I've had characters that are like, I just, I want to be an excitable character who is enthusiastic and loves everybody (laughs) and loves everything and wants to be involved. And so I've created a character around that because I just wanted to play that out. Or if you want to be, I've created a character as well who was this big flirt who (laughs) got everything she wanted by flirting with people or, you know, trying to be tricky in a sense. Mm -hmm. Because it's like I just wanted to play that feeling out. So it's Mm -hmm. just you go around a feeling or a attitude that this character carries. Yeah, it's, it's role play is very much a term. You're playing a role. And it's not necessarily something that you're going to be yourself. It's something you want to explore in a safe environment and you go for it. D&D and LARP and all that stuff is a perfect place to do it. Absolutely. And the cool thing about being able to explore these different avenues and aspects and 
and just different attitudes. And a really cool one, just as a tip, is if you know absolutely nothing about the world you're walking into or the group you're walking into or anything, play a naive character who knows nothing. Yeah, totally acceptable. And figure it out as you go along. Yeah. It's great to be like, I don't know what anything is. I just crawled out of a, you know, foreign space and now I'm here. What do I do? And so you are kind of bringing that, like, you as a player don't know what to do, but now your character doesn't know what to do, so you both learn as you go. Yeah. Which, which is, is very always helpful. fun. Yes. It's very helpful and fun. And that it's also easier on you with costuming, usually. So if you are wanting to costume these original characters, if you're playing that's like a newbie character, you think of it like a new character starting out in a video game. Do they have the coolest armor and weapons and stuff like that? Or do they have no. simple clothes, they you have know? They have simple clothes. And you can absolutely do that. Little little steps are totally acceptable and they're just as important as the big ones. Absolutely. And I, I do want to talk as well about a LARP character, a couple LARP characters that I did. Because LARP is so different than tabletop because <laughs> yeah. you actually, if you're planning to commit to costume your character, like the first session you walk in and play this, because it's you. You are playing the character. It's not you sitting at a table talking about playing a character. You walk in and you embody that. You are wearing what they would wear. You are talking like they would talk. You are acting like they would act. So it's just a totally different method of thought for me. No, you're in a play without being in a play. Exactly. That's I like to think of it as improv acting. Yeah. It's so fun. Long I form it. improv is how there you, you go. say it. <laughs> Long form improv. So with the characters I came up with for LARP, the first one I was looking through Pinterest and I was just really drawn to a boho style. Mm -hmm. A very like free and flowy type style, like the dresses, the skirts, the like boho patterns with like long cardigans and like the big floppy hats. And I, and with LARP too, it was easy for me to costume if I knew I would also wear it in my normal wardrobe. Cause mm -hmm. I said, double you know double use i'm not just getting this to never wear it again right which is is good for convincing my husband to let me buy costume <laughs> pieces so for that i said okay i will wear these pieces i would i would love to own a floppy hat i would love it to doesn't. own some more boho stuff so that is kind of how i developed this kind of hippy dippy yoga instructor yoga studio owning <laughs> larp character who wore a bunch of boho stuff cuz i was just like i just want to wear that yeah. and i could put that into my wardrobe and it would be just fine so it was less costumey and more oh this character could be a real person mhm mm who wears real clothing and it's not so much costumey pieces yeah. but it was still portraying that character well mm -hmm. and the character i played after that i was um, looking at 90s grunge style because you know it's having a resurgence. So yeah. that kind of helped because it's like, oh, this stuff is available in stores. Yeah, that's very I can helpful. find this very easily, which totally helped my decision to become a like rebellious 90s skater girl because <laughs> I was like, I can find flannel so easy. I could costume this character so easily from Goodwill. That's another aspect. If your budget's low and you say, I can go grab these pieces the day of LARP and be able to be yeah. in costume that night, it can make the difference mm -hmm. instead of having to wait for stuff to get shipped or ordering it from overseas or something like that, which I have seen people do. And, you know, they're waiting last minute to see if their costume comes in and it's such a stress. So stressful. And I didn't want to have to do that. So that was part of it. And I want to go back to when you were talking about how changes in your costume or the way your costume is telling people about your character mm -hmm. because I played in a LARP with someone and in a, as a pair character who very much took on that mentality and I'd never really thought about costuming in that way before mm. and it really was intriguing to me okay to to see how she would costume her character typically this way and then one month like the next month she would come in and something would be different about the way her makeup was done or her hair was done or the way something yeah. was worn. Like if you were a very well put together character and then all of a sudden you come in in jeans mm -hmm. or it's like your character typically wears dresses like my, you know, flowy boho chick mm -hmm. typically came in in dresses, typically came in looking very flowy and free mm -hmm. and something very upsetting happened to her. And when she was 
a human, not a vampire, since we were in a vampire lark. She was a very kind of like that rebellious teen and wore like the darker colors and and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, this terrible thing has happened and it would draw her back to her humanness. Safe place. So instead of the boho dress, she came in that month with like fishnets and a flannel and like dark lipstick. And it was such a stark contrast to her usual. And it was... People may not have super read the whole costume thing, but they were like, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Even if you don't register it on a visual aspect. And that's the thing. It's like the whole saying of a picture's worth a thousand words. Like that's what you're doing. You're painting a picture with your costume and your cosplay. So especially when it's an original character, they may not know all 1,000 words, but they're definitely getting a feeling and they're getting an impression about who and what that character is. Exactly. And... Try out an original character. I mean, just try it out. Just have fun with it. Because it is so freeing to be able to do whatever you want without having to worry about it being or it looking how it needs to look. You have total freedom for it. And that's, it's a lot of fun. I love seeing people's original characters. I love doing original characters. Um, They're absolutely encouraged. Please do it. And if you have any, please send them to us. I want to know about them. <laughs> right. We want to see it. Yeah. You because know. we're we're needy in that way. We like to see original characters and your cosplays too. Because we know all the work that goes into cosplay, whether you craft it or buy it, it's still a lot of time. It's still yeah. a lot of work, and it's just cool to see. Yeah. So that's uh, definitely a little bit of a primer on original characters, how original characters are kind of thought up, why you see original characters at cosplay or a lot of cosplay conventions nowadays and how I hope to see more in the future. And in our next episode, we are going to be actually talking about an original character suggestion that we got to costume for someone and kind of that character's journey and how we chose pieces for a character that we didn't know anything about (laughs) until this person told us about them. So Stay tuned for that, guys. Yeah, hopefully, a little bit of this episode will help you understand the next one coming. And as always, check out our suggestion form. Yes. And get us some stuff to cosplay because I like to dress up pretty like. <laughs> <laughs> and I like to make other people dress up pretty like. Right. So if you want to be dressed up all pretty like, send us a <laughs> suggestion and you might see yourself featured on a future episode. We will see you guys next time. And yep. that's, that's it for us. Yeah, so. next time. Mm-hmm. Bye. Bye. <laughs>